Let me tell you, so the lyrics to real rock music is nothing more than satanic cyanide. Get it out of your house, throw it out, and burn it. My fellow Americans, we will no longer be oppressed by the fascism of Christianity. Oh, he's gonna throw you right into hell, man. One day, off this fucking property. Are you back? Are you bored? Are you bored? Go tune your uh, your drums or something. Satan is real. Satan is real. Start peeing your little pants. That's what you do. You're not a Christian. You're a hypocrite. You're a lying sack of hypocrite. Someone like me sometimes hangs out with friends who are also devout Christians. But of course, I'm the odd one because of my musical taste. They tend to stay in the Christian music, worship, praise, bubble, and their reasoning is because, well, secular music reminds them of their good old days. Same reason why they tend to stay away from R-rated movies out of principle. They just want to get away from what they perceive as smut as much as possible. Even if I don't necessarily agree with them, if it helps them with their day-to-day -day walk, then I'm down with it. Now, as the title suggests, I'm a metalhead. I'm also a Christian. And these two sides tend to be on opposite ends of the spectrum. Yet, here I am, religiously, <laughs> pun intended, listening to my favorite heavy metal artists and seeing them in concert. The last Christian concert I went to was in 2004. How did I get there? This is how it happened to me. It wasn't my family that would tell me. It was the people in Christian schools that would always tell me that secular mainstream stuff could be a bad influence. So growing up, I strictly listened to popular Christian artists. At the same time, I was staying within that bubble. I was still getting in trouble a lot at school. Wait a minute. This music should be influencing me to do good things. You mean the songs that say God is great and trust in God and the inspirational keep the faith songs are supposed to help me with my bullying problems and my anger issues and my just downright hatred of people at the time? You can only hear it so many times before I'm thinking, yeah, and? So, growing bored of the same crap I always kept hearing on Christian radio, I started getting a bit more exposed to secular music. At the time, I was about 14, 15 years old. And at that time, your tastes start developing and getting more defined tune. So for me, rock and metal, especially from the new metal scene at the time, is generally where I was leaning towards. And then I noticed, hey, I just heard the fight song by Marilyn Manson. You know, this one. And I didn't decide to become an atheist. And then one day in 2003, I heard two Metallica songs on a mix CD given to me. Found a copy of Metallica's Black album in my sister's room, bought the St. Anger album, and the rest is history. Much as people crap on the St. Anger album, it was therapeutic and resonated with me. Let me plug you into my world. Can't you help me be uncrazy? And ultimately, I got the rest of the back catalog. I noticed as time went on, my behavior was actually improving. And I'm not saying that the music switch was the sole reason, but I was realizing, well, you know what? My faith has nothing to do with what kind of music I listen to. And so, I dove further into the world of heavy metal, and I haven't looked back since. Oh, heavy metal is just a phase. You'll grow out of it. I'm 31, and I still haven't grown out of it, so I don't think it's a phase. So, can you be a devout Christian and still listen to secular heavy metal? Well, yes, you can. Look, there's good and bad in all genres. Heavy metal is no exception, but why does it get targeted as the most sacrilegious when there's crap just as vulgar in today's pop scene? God hates the soul. God hates the soul. Yeah, it doesn't help that Slayer has album titles like God Hates Us All and Christ's Illusion. <laughs> there's a ton of popular metal acts with songs considered satanic in nature. Heck, this is Ghost's career in a nutshell. But a lot of their songs in stage show, it's done for theatrics and the sake of entertainment. Yeah, a few of the acts actually do believe the lyrics that they're singing, but most of them do not. Heavy metal as a whole is very open-ended. You can find spiritual undertones in a dark song. You can even find a pro-religious message in a song meant to be critical of religion. 
Songs allow a person to put their own imagination, experiences, and dreams into the lyrics. Uh, people can interpret it many ways. Uh, Ms. Gore was looking for sadomasochism and bondage, and she found it. Someone looking for surgical references would have found it as well. By and large, on the surface, yeah, heavy metal sounds evil, especially when you get into further subgenres. And of course, there's huge elements of atmosphere surrounding the music that give it a very dark edge. But the musical and lyrical themes simply come from the artist's love of horror movies, classic novels, gothic literature, poetry, mythology, and even some history and science added to the mix. It all depends on which artist you give a try. And I could go on for days listing the examples, but let's go over a few prime. Sabaton is known for their songs about historical battles and acts of heroism. That doesn't sound sacrilegious. Amon and Marth is known for songs about Norse mythology and the Vikings. It may sound sacrilegious, but it's really not. Epica's last two albums have dove into quantum and string theories. Iced Earth has been all over the place. Spawn, the comic character, classic horror characters, world history, and even their own made-up stories. Symphony X has done albums about Greek mythology, Homer's Odyssey, John Milton's Paradise Lost, Dante's Inferno, and Orpheus in the Underworld. You get my point. There's quite the variety with a lot of substance, and I love it all. I can listen to heavy metal bands and still enjoy their music regardless of lyrical content. In my headbanger's journey, I realized this a long time ago. And it obviously works for me. I can show up to my church wearing a band t-shirt and people accept me for it. Heck, during a long car ride up a missions trip, I played a Dream Theater song to my pastor. And he loved it. Even asking me in front of everyone during a sermon, Hey Anthony, what was that song you played me? Even he, a minister of over 40 years, gets bored of Christian music. So here's the thing. If this type of music doesn't affect your faith or beliefs in any way, then have at it. There are actually quite a few well-known heavy metal figures that are actually born-again Christian. Like Nico McBrain, the drummer from Iron Maiden, Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, Blackie Lawless from Wasp, Alice Cooper, the shock rocker himself. They weren't Christians when they made a lot of their songs, but they are now. There's plenty of secular people who enjoy Christian metal bands like Striper, Skillet, one of my personal favorites, Theocracy, even if they don't agree with the lyrics. They still respect the bands and appreciate them for the musical talent. As Glenn Fricker said on his YouTube channel, I take Theocracy's lyrics as seriously as I take Venom's lyrics. Most people just take the songs for what they are. They're just songs. If a secularist doesn't take the lyrics seriously, why should I? If Tom Araya, the singer of Slayer, could hold on to his Catholic beliefs and not take the lyrics he sung seriously, why should I? Sure, I wouldn't recommend a born-again Christian jumping into a Cradle of Filth album or wearing that infamous shirt, but there's a ton of great heavy metal bands out there that are not very offensive. To people who stay within the religious bubble, bands like Metallica and Iron Maiden are seen as hardcore bands with offensive lyrics to stay away from. Yet these two are actually among the most benign. Once you've actually dipped in the world of heavy metal, you'll realize that. If you learn the context of what the artists are saying, then you can find yourself just enjoying the music for what it is. And you know what the best part is? If you find it too dark, too offensive, too anti-Christian, then you can always just turn it off. If you like what I have to say, share the hell out of this video, make sure you're subscribed and that notification bell is clicked, and be there the next time I come out of the shadows.